training was strictly art history where you looked at a painting and you uh, kind of uh, um, tried to get meaning out of it and you looked at the technique then you studied the history of the painter and the society at that time so the economic conditions the political conditions the religious conditions but uh, today i think we've moved on as far as since the invention of and popularization of the camera and the grand agenda uh, of the new liberal policies of democracy and all that so to be democratic uh, at first, people could not say what they wanted because they had patronage. The patron decided what he wanted the artist to say. It wasn't the artist who decided what he wanted to say. Very few. In the Renaissance, we see the artist taking charge and uh, deciding what they uh, would like to say. You, you have the whole uh, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, classical era being revived from the Greeks and then carried on by the Romans and then further by the Christian civilization after um, the Vatican was established. But you don't see the eastern side, uh, that is not exposed so much because the general conception is that the artist in the eastern world was not allowed to do what he wanted to do. And in terms of book production, in terms of uh, um, objects, uh, everyday usage objects and objects used. Because in Islam there is no ritual as such uh, like Christianity has or like Hinduism has or like uh, other religions have, Buddhism has. So a lot of objects are, are needed for those rituals. A lot of clo clothing is needed. A lot of uh, drama is created when the actual uh, meditation starts. But uh, in Islam, you don't have, the simplicity is, doesn't allow you to make it any grander than what it is. So, uh, the arts of Islam are generally patronage related as taught in the Western culture, not by us. Although the Western uh, mo modern uh, world adapted a lot from Islam, especially Ibn Khuldum, a 12th century, uh, I would say, a sociologist uh, for the first time. And, but those uh, things are never propagated. They never say a renaissance was because Islam came into the world and spread so widely and that's how re renaissance was to counter uh, that and then within Christianity you had reformation in the 17th century and uh, reformation dictated that you can't have images uh, as part of your religious ritual and your connection each person's connection and collectively people's connection with god was at a very personal level and you didn't require you required a space like a church but you didn't require uh, extra uh, rituals to uh, finish off a mass but so the clergy which had ruled for almost what 200 years were challenged by Martin Luther and then uh, Protestantism came and to counter that we have what is called the Baroque era in uh, Western art uh, which could be compared to what happened in Iran, what happened in Turkey, what happened in uh, India, the three superpowers at that time. Uh, there was the Ottoman Empire and there was the um, Iranian Safavids uh, who came about and finally the Mughals okay, who kind of dictated what art should be and how it should be. The inspiration generally came from China or Japan or Korea for the Muslim artist and you'll see a lot of elements that the Chinese art uh, which is more than 5,000 years old 
and it's all documented and the Japanese art which is almost uh, 2000 years old and you have the Korean art which is approximately the same uh, time. Popularism or democrat democratic rule kind of included the more popular forms of art, which today popular art is what we call contemporary art, something that anyone with a camera can be an artist. And that is what how photography has taken a different turn. And so you have videography, you have the new media which is coming in. Okay. So you just take your camera, you click away, and you select uh, what you want to show to the world, and that's how you become an artist. But the process through which uh, academies go, there's a huge debate in the way uh, art is taught academically because most people just follow what was has traditionally been taught in Western uh universities karachi being a metropolis where tradition is always challenged okay with so much diverse population and so many different cultures that mingle together so tradition is not something that i think people from karachi generally followed and they challenged it but uh, in lahore uh, the tradition is still very much alive because of its proximity to the traditional schools that were established and the artists who were practicing in Lahore being the center and its proximity to Delhi and its uh, availability to travel to Calcutta. So all those influences um, kept that tradition alive. and. Uh, the houses which uh, subscribe to traditional art forms and we, which do not uh, want to challenge it. So modernity broke all those traditions in the Western world. Okay? I think uh, Lahore kind of still resists or a faction of Lahore still resists that modernity to come in. Okay, even though they do have the resources, they do have the education, uh, they understand art very well, but uh, they prefer to promote the traditional art forms, which is always very challenging. But Shakir Ali coming into NCA, the kind of bastion of art as far as Pakistan was concerned. Because all these schools that you see in uh, Karachi are all products of NCA, the National College of Arts, which was the original Mayo College. Uh, and that was to sustain the traditional art forms. But NCA, uh, Shakir Ali, brought in modernity there, changed the curriculum. People started to work with the, uh, on the easel with canvases and with not the traditional form of uh, pigment making, but uh, they, they brought in acrylics, which was a real challenge to the people who had been working traditionally in oils. And here they were being told that now you can work in something which has been prepared for you and you just take it out of a bottle and use it. And you don't have to run around after squirrels or uh, get hair from oxen and make your own brushes and uh, uh, boil so many chemicals together to form pigments. All those things were challenged uh, in the 60s and the 70s. And by 80s, we had a very vibrant art culture. And unlike what 
people normally say that 80s was also a challenging area uh, era for Pakistani art because uh, especially Lahore, not so much for Karachi. But uh, that Ziaul Haq's regime came in and stopped. Um, I don't think Zia's regime really affected art. I think it promoted. I mean, all, uh, if you take music, if you take dance, if you take uh, painting, uh, and you take all the art forms that form uh, what we call uh, in the traditional sense, the art history, uh, all were being promoted like never before. I mean, so many new people came in in the 70s and the 80s. And uh, I think 90s was very repressive for uh, Pakistani art, uh, where a lot of people went abroad, okay, and have not returned. They still practice their art form. Some have returned, yes, and but most of the people, 90s was a, a very confusing time for Pakistan in terms of art. People didn't know, do we follow tradition or do we... Uh, so the whole element of truck art and pop art came up, although Ahmed Parvez and uh, other people uh, had started this movement in back in the 70s of pop art. Uh, uh, what was happening in London or Paris or New York or San Francisco uh, as a result of students' uh, movements there. Film became an integral part of an art form uh, and still is. Uh, a videography and using film as an art form to document or to communicate something. Uh, that is what we do at Zabist. Okay, uh, we don't follow the traditional. I mean, we teach our students the traditional drawing, painting, but once the student starts to use a camera or a video or uh, a f or taking film, then very rarely would he or she want to go back to tradition. I mean, the computer is the uh, key here, and your phone. I mean, your iPhones and your, all your Androids have all these apps that you don't require a, a, a huge canvas to work on. Uh, the fine arts is not what fine arts was 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Fine arts today is how well can you use the apparatus to your advantage. And maybe uh, you can use the oil or maybe you can use acrylics and you can add elements of design. Students who are from Pakistan and studying media studies um, abroad and uh, for whatever reason, primarily for security reasons. And when they come back, they, they face the challenge that uh, they're given the freedom to work freely in whichever country that they're in and doing the media. When they come back and they try and fit into the Pakistani scenario, it becomes very, very difficult. Because here, uh, as I said, the polarization is quite great and very few people are able to uh, uh, overcome these challenges. I mean, you have to be persistent. But I see a vibrant change happening in the last couple of years with so many people going out into the rural and working with the rural communities and bridging the gap between the rural and the urban. When a new media comes in, it, it is always challenged and people don't like change uh, that much. The status quo is the key word. You keep on doing things the way, you know, like your father did or your grandfather did or your great grandfather did and but the rapid uh, globalization has mobilized a totally different kind of thought and that is coming forth uh, in the students work 
I mean, it is dark at the moment, very dark, and but I think that's a global phenomenon, generally, uh, and that depression comes through in various forms. But then the, there are always uh, people who have a very positive attitude towards that these dark clouds will eventually leave us. Wow.